very warm welcome to Britain's favourite Sunday sermon. Now, I've talked before about a lack of information from the authorities. Sometimes you feel you're being conned, misled, misinformed. Well, today I need to talk to you about another subject. We've heard a lot about illegal immigration. But actually, we don't discuss enough the huge numbers of legal immigration to the point where it's out of control. We've actually now got mass migration here in the UK. Now, 15 years ago, if we'd had a rational national debate and said, hey, let's increase the population of the country by 10 million over the next 15 years, perfectly reasonable thing to discuss. And if there'd been a vote on it and people had decided yes, I'm pretty sure the next point would have been, well, we better start building some infrastructure, more homes, get more doctors, more hospital places, more dentists, more capacity to cope with that huge extra number of people. But we didn't have that debate and we haven't built that extra capacity. But that's what's happened. Our population has grown by over 10 million in the UK in some 15 years. And so actually, for all of us, the quality of life and our relative prosperity has declined. It's obvious, isn't it? If you don't build the extra capacity and you stick another 10 million people in a the country, then it's going to be a little bit harder to get around. Prices are going to go up. Likewise, if you've got an existing amount of wealth in a nation, and then you add 10 million people, the wealth per head mathematically, automatically reduces. So here's how it's happened. You see, we've been promised manifesto after manifesto, election after election, that they would bring lawful immigration numbers down. But actually, they did the opposite. And after Brexit, we were promised there would be a new points-based skilled worker system, skilled worker visa system. But what actually happened was the government, the Conservative government, they set the threshold, the salary threshold, so low, down at about £20,000 compared to an average national salary of £30,000, that actually it's like open season. And so what's happened under that skilled worker visa system and with generous refugee provisions for Ukraine, for Hong Kong, in 2022, we had 1.2 million people gross arrive in the UK, just in one year. Now, the government has a pretty tenuous way of working out who's actually leaving the country in any year. It's a bit of a guesstimate. They think about 600,000 left, so they think the net number was about 600,000. Here's the rub, though. In 2023, it'll be a similar number. Over a million people will arrive in the UK. And in 2024, another million. Maybe half a million or so will leave. Huge net increase in the UK population every single year. And if the Labour Party win the next election, do you really think they're going to reduce immigration numbers? I mean, they wanted more freedom of movement with the European Union. They want more open borders. Keir Starmer wants even more resettlement of refugees. He wants to do some form of deal with the EU. So no, under the Labour Party, the numbers will go up. That's under the lawful skilled worker visa system. There's another thing that they never really talk about that I've looked into, visa extensions that don't really feature in those numbers I've just been referring to. In the year to June, visa extensions this year up 50% to some 670,000 people. That's people whose visas were about to expire and they've got an extension. So they're already here, so they don't count in the 1.2 million people that I've just been referring to. So you've got visa extensions, huge increase. And then you've got another thing where the numbers are going through the roof. Exponential growth that some people think is marvellous. Yes, I talked about it before. Students. So the number of student visas, 
which four or five years ago was running just over 200,000 a year, has now soared. It's almost trebled. 650,000 a year. But actually, of that 650,000, 500,000 are students and about 150,000 are their dependents. Scratch my head, but why do you need a dependent to go and do a degree? When I did a degree, a degree some years ago, it's not like I took my girlfriend up there to my university. Why do you need your dependents to come over? I'll tell you why. Because countries around the world have worked out that the UK student visa system, it is another open door for lawful permanent immigration into the UK. And that's the reason why there's been a huge increase in numbers, in particular, for example, from Nigeria and indeed from India. And those are the nations where actually the number of dependents coming over has also increased hugely. So this student number is going up. And I suspect we'll see over the next 12 months, it'll go up again. Word spreads. People realise there's an easy, open door, lawful way to go and live in the UK. Because all you have to do is do your degree. Maybe you pass it. Maybe you don't. You can then do what's called a graduate worker visa for two years and then you can apply for a skilled worker visa that I've just been talking about that gives you another five years and then you can stay here under a permanent visa bingo you're in the UK forever thank you very much don't be surprised over the next couple of years if that student visa number goes to seven eight nine hundred thousand plus it's going through the roof now the universities love it they're selling more expensive degrees to people, they don't care about the consequences on our fabric, the consequences on society. They don't care that housing rents in student university towns are going through the roof. This year alone, I think, an average of some 9% increase in rents. They don't care about all those consequences. And as I say, if the quantity goes up, the quality goes down. So there we've got three ways why the population of the UK is increasing dramatically. Three legal ways, essentially, where we, this government have completely opened the borders. They've betrayed Brexit. They said they would take back control of our borders, and they've done exactly the opposite. They've opened the borders lawfully to mass immigration into the United Kingdom. And don't be surprised, all over the world, People have worked it out, and here they come. And the consequences is that our quality of life is reducing. Our public services cannot cope. It depresses local wages, and it reduces the incentive on businesses to train our own young people. You've got this absurd situation. Our own young people, encouraged to go to university, to do dodgy degrees with huge interest-bearing loans that they can't get on top of, whilst it's sort of open season for anybody to come here. It's a very, very bad way to run a country. I can't think of any other sensible, developed nation that's doing what we're doing. It's completely opened our doors to mass immigration. There's a very simple answer, yes, Let's have smart immigration, where we welcome high-quality people who can genuinely add value where we need it. Engineers, doctors, nurses. But what about training our own? Brilliant, smart, bright young people. That's really what we should be doing. So we want smart migration. One in, one out. If about 400,000 people on average are leaving every year, we could welcome a similar number, smart, high quality immigration that would genuinely add value. One in, one out. It's the only net zero I want, net zero immigration. And with that, I think we'd all be a lot better off. And here ended my Sunday sermon.